We have a closed form of an arithmetic sequence. And this is the equation that comes from an arithmetic sequence. This is called the closed form of arithmetic sequence right here. Um, from this, we can generate any of the terms within that sequence. We can generate the first term. Actually, the first term is written right there. Okay, we can generate the 18th term. We can generate the 1.5 millionth term when we have this equation. Okay, from that equation, that closed form, that a sub n, we said what that was before, that is the nth, that is the value, the value of the nth term. That one's the value of the nth term. a sub 1, you guys remember what that is? First term. That's what the 1 means, the first term. That's the value of the first term. n, that's just our variable that references the nth term. And then d refers to the common difference between the terms. You have to understand that vocabulary. Okay, you have to know what those variables mean and what they signify. For example, when I'm asking you to find the 12th term, there's two ways to do this problem. One way, you can keep adding the common difference each time until you get to the 12th term, and then you write what that, that is. However, if I ask you for the one millionth term, you are not going to be able to do that. All that you're not going to be able to repeat that, okay? One million times, okay? There could there is a shortcut kind of around it with adding, but it gets much more difficult when you're talking about geometric, okay? For the sake of argument, I'm going to leave these questions as saying the twelfth term. However. I could change it to be the 1.5 millionth term, which kind of forces my hand in you using this equation. But I don't want to do that because that's kind of foolish to write 1.5 millionth and then you typing in 1.5 million in there, okay? Or you calculating it with 1.5 million. That's just plain old silly. So I'm going to leave it at 12 if we can all just decide on the fact that, yes, I'm going to use the equation when the question is asked like this, when it's not just what's the fifth term or the seventh term. I, understandably, if you did the fifth or the sixth or the seventh term, if I was asking for, understandably, why don't you just add it? Makes sense. Easier. Okay. But if I start asking for like the twelfth term, I skip a bunch. I want you to use the equation. Does that make sense? Do I have to put 1.5 millionth term? Probably not. Okay. For all adults, you can just agree with that. Good. Great. Wow. What did just happen there? Anyways, that was exciting. So from this, what do we know about this sequence? Let's just start throwing stuff out. What do you know about this sequence? Negative 8. A sub 1 is negative 8. Great. What else do we know? We're translating what we know into the symbols or the vocabulary that we're talking about in this chapter, which is the important part, which is the part that you have to learn. Yeah. Okay, we're adding 5 to each one, turning that into the vocabulary. That means D is 5. What else do we know from the statement? Yeah. 12 is the N. Great. Okay, that's all of the information we can get from this sequence. But now what we need to do is we need to turn around and deal with other information we have. We have one more piece of information that we can get from this sequence that's written, as it's written. The one more piece of information that's kind of obscure is you identify that the D is 5, which means there's a common difference, which means it's an arithmetic sequence, which means we have this equation to model an arithmetic sequence. So we're going to take, we're going to write that equation down. Because it's arithmetic, arithmetic, we have that equation to model the sequence, and we can start putting stuff into that equation that models the sequence. Does that make sense? That's all vocabulary stuff. It's all understanding what the words mean and the notations mean. Again, we're furthering the notation conversation. N is 12. So in this closed form of the of the arithmetic sequence, n is 12. So put n in there as 12. So we start doing this. So it's a sub 12 equals. Okay, we got a, n is 12. Fantastic. a sub 1 is 8. So put that in there. In its spot. d 
is 5. Is negative, eight? negative 8, sorry, thank you. Negative 8. Can we calculate now what the 12th term is? Just calculate that out. So it's negative 8 plus 11 times 5. Can somebody tell me what that is? What? 47. 47. Fantastic. I'll believe you. Good. Let's go to the next problem, which is going to seem slightly different, but it's really the same kind of thing. It's the same skill. Let's do this. What do we know? Find the 20th term. What do we know? What does that tell us? Find the 20. No. Yes. We are looking for a sub. So it tells us what our goal is. A sub 20 is what? It's the question, right? That's the goal. Also, from this, we know that n is 20 in that case. I don't know why I wrote one. Great. So those two things are kind of paired up. Arithmetic sequence, what does that tell us? What do we know by the words arithmetic sequence? Automatically think of, you got to think of the equation. A sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. That's what we get from the statement that says arithmetic sequence. Think of that. Positive 4. Yep. That has 25 as its 10th term. We'll just keep going now. What does 25 as its 10th term tell us? It tells us when n equals 10. What does a sub n equal? 25. See how we're translating the words back into the symbols and then we're mixing it together with understanding the vocabulary of arithmetic sequence and knowing the equation. Okay. Is the math crazy? No, it's the vocabulary and the notation. Again. Um, find a common di or and a common difference of four. That is d equals four. So essentially what we do now with the problem is we're going to mix this stuff together and we're going to solve it for the variables that are left and then we're going to get new information that we're going to respond to. Eventually to answer the question, what's a sub 20 or what's the 20th term? Okay. So all the stuff I wrote in black we're going to combine together for the part A, find the first term or a sub 1 because so we're going to use this equation. We're going to start putting values in there. So a sub n is 25. a sub 1, we don't know. There's no information based on a sub 1. We know what the n. If 25 is our nth term, if 25 is a sub n, that means n has to be 10. And d we were given as 4. Can you solve that for a sub 1? Is that math crazy? No. It's the notation. That's crazy and responding to the vocabulary. So what do we get for a sub 1? We get 25 equals a sub 1 plus 9 times 4, which is a sub 1 equals what? Negative 11. Good, great, negative 11. OK. We still have an, that's not our question, so I'm not going to circle that. That's not even the purpose of the problem, right? So. Let's turn around. We can actually write the closed form. I might ask you a question that says write the closed form for an arithmetic sequence that has those things, those parts, where the 25th term uh, or 25 is the 10th term and a common difference of 4. I might say that, write the closed form of an arithmetic sequence um, that has 25 as the 10th term and a common difference of 4. That might be the question, which is a little bit different. So in order to do that, we have to take this and put it back into our general equation for it. But we leave n in there, OK? So we're going to leave a sub n equals negative 11 plus n minus 1 times d, which is 4. Now, don't you leave it like that, because we don't ever leave things not simplified, OK? Unless I specifically tell you. So we need to simplify this guy out. So a sub n then equals negative 4 plus or negative 11 plus 4n minus 4. So we get a sub n equals um, 4n minus 15. And we'll see you when you get. 
Then after we get the closed form of the arithmetic sequence, we're going to turn around and we want to know what a sub 20 is. We want to know what the 20th term is. That was the goal of the problem. So we're going to put 20 in for n into our formula that we set up. We're going to do 4 times 20, which is 80, minus 15, which is going to be 65. And that is going to be our answer to the whole problem.